Hey guys, Smith here with Minute Maintenance. Today we're gonna to change on all eight coil packs and all eight spark plugs on my 2007 Ford Expedition. Now the reason you wanna do this to your vehicle at least every 50,000 miles is to get better gas mileage, better performance, better extension of life on your motor yourself. So you can pay somebody else to do it or you can take care of ourselves right here in the driveway with limited tools. Stick with me, we'll get this job done together. All right, guys, in front of me, you have everything you need to complete this job. Again, if you're just changing only the spark plugs, that's perfectly okay, but I'm going to go ahead and change the spark plugs and all eight coil packs. Now, to get this job done, you're going to need eight new spark plugs, eight new coil packs, and those will be specific to whatever vehicle you're working on, but the process of removing the coil packs or moving the spark plugs are basically universal. And for this particular vehicle, we're going to need a 7 millimeter socket to remove the bolt that holds in the coil pack, and then a 5 8 socket to remove the spark plugs. Now, I have two different 5 8 sockets, one with a rubber boot in it, and one without and the reason you have the rubber boot in it is it makes it a lot easier when you're pulling the spark plug out that way the rubber boot gets a solid connection on the spark plug and you can pull it out of the engine the problem with that is when i go putting spark plugs back in if i have the rubber boot sometimes the socket wants to stay attached to the spark plug when i'm pulling everything else out and then i'm in a bit of a pickle and i gotta remove the whole spark plug and start over again so what i like to do is use the rubber booted spark plug 5 8 socket to remove the spark plug and there's a standard 5 8 socket for the reinsertion all right without further ado Let's get to work. All right, guys, step one is you're going to want to reach in on whichever coil pack you're starting with. I'm starting here on my cylinder one, which had the misfire. The reason for my particular misfire was, as you see, I have a brand new heater hose. My old heater hose had a leak, small leak right here in the T, which was dripping directly on my coil pack, which flooded out the cylinder, caused me my issue. So I'm going to start on this one, work all the way back, and then switch to the other side. But first thing you want to do is grab a firm hold of the wire that holds the coil pack in place. And on the back side, there's normally a pressure clip so all you gotta do is just get a good squeeze on that and you yank it right off. And then what we have down here is a seven millimeter bolt. Let's go ahead and get that taken off. And lefty loosey, righty tighty. There we go. On the other ones, you might need an extension of sorts, so it's always good to have a couple different extensions on hand. And once you got it loose enough, you can reach in and you can finish it off by hand and slowly pull the bolt up because you'll be reusing that, so you don't want to lose that guy. And the coil pack. Just comes right off. That's simple. Next, we'll go inside with a 5 8 socket and an extension. We'll get that spark plug out. All right, now I just want to work your way in. Now, if you're watching this video because you're specifically looking for answers on the 5.4 liter Trident motor and how you get the spark plug out of those, the original spark plugs were a pretty janky design that was put together by Ford. And what I found was when it comes to removing the two piece spark plugs, because they tend to break on you, the way I found it to be the easiest to do is drive the engine drive the car. I drove for about an hour, hour and a half and made sure everything was nice and hot. All that carbon on that spark plug got nice and loose. And once that was, I had to put some, once it was done, I got some gloves on. I reached in here and I went to town and it was hot and I got a couple burns on me, but I yanked those spark plugs out with little issue. All right. And again, once it's nice and broken loose, you can finish it off by hand. And in a couple seconds, in under 45 seconds, here we go. The old gross grody spark plug let's compare that to the new one nice and new nice and old i wonder which one's going to work better on our motor right definitely gonna be this one so it's a good thing we're getting rid of this one we got seven more to go but let's finish up with this first one and then we'll get you out of here all right, guys, a bit of a curveball that this manufacturer wanted to throw at me. Now, the original spark plugs and the replacement ones I put in there were both 5 eighths on the socket to put the spark plug in, but the new ones that I just purchased are 9 sixteenths. So I have a cheap $50, 50, correction, 50 piece socket set that I picked up at Walmart forever and a half ago. So thankfully I have a 9 16 floating around. So we'll go ahead and uh, get this bad girl in there and get this taken care of. Now as you see, I'm keeping positive pressure on the end of this so I can try to guide her in the way I wanted to go in so I can get nice, steady. There we go. And always start it off by hand, guys. Always start it off by hand before you go in with any implements or any tools. Want to get it nice and hand tight. That's good. And then if we went lefty for our Lucy, we got to go righty on tidy. And there you go. In three, two, ooh, where's number one? Right there. Now there are right there perfect nice and tight now let's grid our new coil pack and toss her in 
All right, so we have a new coil pack. Now what I did before, I stuck it on there. As you can see all that glob in there. The manufacturer in their box sent dielectric grease. Now what that does is it helps keep everything nice and watertight. So if any more coolant from another heater hose don't fit on me or anything moisture tries to get down there, it's not gonna interfere with the spark plug, hopefully. As long as it's not a massive amount, it's also gonna give you a better electrical connection. So I just put a little dab of dielectric grease in the end of every single one of them. Now this just goes on in here, just slide her in. Nice firm contacts, give a good little push. There's only so far she can go. Then we get our bolt, which was a seven millimeter. And we're starting it by hand. If at all possible, always start by hand. There we go. Now I'll go ahead and grab the seven millimeter, which I went ahead and put an extension on. Get it nice and hand tight before we toss the socket wrench on there. Now while I have you here, if you have any questions or comments or any particular vehicle concerns that you're dealing with or, or maintenance that you want to know about, what's the best way to do what or so forth, or if you have any, any comments from me as far as a better tactic of getting things done, please reach out. I'm always willing to learn. I'm always willing to help so I can answer any questions that you could possibly toss at me the best I can. Maybe make a video to help resolve any issues for you. So I just want to get that nice and tight. And because I was talking, I didn't remind myself, lefty Lucy, righty is our tidy. So I was going the wrong way. Golly gee willikers. There we go. And we take our clip. And again, when you're removing them, just push this little tab in the back here. And then we put it on, just push it straight on. Now you don't want to push by the wires, don't pull by the wires, grab it by the body of it. And get a nice solid connection there. There we go, and that's all she wrote. All right, moment of truth. We had a check engine light before. We had a severe shake in the motor. And we had a scanner that told us we had a cylinder one misfire. Now all we did was change the cylinder one spark plug and the coil pack. Let's see if that took care of what the actual problem was. And there you go, check engine light is gone. That light blinking up there, that's for tire pressure. That's nothing to be concerned about, but the check engine light is gone, guys. So this is a running, driving vehicle once again. I'm gonna go ahead and change out the other seven spark plugs and coil packs, but you, you saw the process. It's gonna be completely identical, just working different angles, but with the exact same implements. I'll be right back with you guys. I'm not gonna make you watch me do that seven more times. And just like that, guys, we got four new coil packs and spark plugs over here on the driver's side and four new coil packs and spark plugs over here on the passenger side. And I think that color yellow I went with just really sets the engine off, so it gives it a nice little contrast. Maybe one of these videos will go through and I'll show you how to degrease your engine and get that nice and clean. But furthermore, this is a pretty universal process when it comes to cleaning up your spark plugs and your coil packs. You gotta change them out, get better gas mileage, get better performance. Some issues I've had people run into in the past when it comes to changing spark plugs is a lot of debris might get caught in the spark plug cylinder well. Let's go ahead and shoot some carb cleaner down in there. Let that soak about 15, 20 minutes, then go in there with your socket and your socket wrench. Try to work around in there to get a nice, good connection. Just be patient like anything in life. Take your time, be patient, it'll all work out in the end. If you have any comments or questions or any concerns about the process I went through, or if you have any concerns about the vehicle you're working on, feel free to reach out. And again, hope you take a minute out of your day to do some maintenance. Thank you.